What's up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Welcome. We're playing Arkeo Shinar today in the world of indie games. This is kind of a cool little archaeological management sim where you run an exploratory group that's trying to make as much money as possible without going out of business by essentially plundering artifacts from other countries and bringing them back home. But we're not going to talk about that part. We're not going to talk about that part. Instead, we're going to say that we're doing this for enlightenment and knowledge and learning. Let's go ahead and start a career. Uh, so we can become a true archaeologist. Difficulty level normal? Yeah, sure. I don't want to go. You got to finish base. Now I don't want to do the tutorial. I've played this game before. I have an idea what I'm doing. I played the tutorial last time I played. It'll Hello, be fine. Child, if you are reading this, then I'm probably dead. A long time ago, when I was young, I had a goal. I dedicated my whole life to fulfill one ambition, but I failed. While I was a student, I came across some inaccuracy about the Tower of Babel. Thus, my lifelong obsession began. After my graduation, I contacted the Royal Archaeology Institute to help me fulfill my destiny. They hired me as an explorer. I finally had some freedom to do some research and I found out that the Entomonarchy was possibly inspired by the Bible story of the Tower of Babel. After a while, I got promoted. I became an archaeologist. The Institute started to send me to many different excavation sites, and my dream began to fade away. I don't even know when my hair turned grey. I dedicated myself to work, and as a result, I didn't achieve my biggest goal. But I knew one thing. Robert Curledaway found an imitation of the tower created by King Nebuchadnezzar II. Now, when you are listening to these words, I'm dead. I'm sorry that I didn't spend much time with you. I know I don't have the right to demand anything from you, but I'm asking for this one thing. Please continue the search. Find the original location of the tower and let my soul rest in peace. If my words aren't enough to convince you, return to our home and go to my office. Read my notes. Find out the truth. My last clue was an ancient manuscript from the Royal Library of Alexandria. But as you know, that library was destroyed in a fire with all of its treasures. However, the manuscript somehow survived the fire. I think it wasn't written on paper. There are only a few spoken messages which I wrote down that can help you find it. This lost text is the key to the Tower of Babel. If you manage to retrieve it, I promise you will be the most famous archaeologist in history. But it isn't an easy task. That's why you shouldn't do it alone. A good starting point is the Institute where I worked. If everything went according to my plan, there should be a place for you. The Institute will guide you and lead you, offering a helping hand. But don't reveal your true goal, because the world isn't free of greed and envy. Remember, my child, the Tower of Babel was the obsession which consumed me. I ask you to fulfill my destiny, but not to follow the same path. After all these years, I finally know that my greatest achievement is you. Signed, your late father. He's not kidding when he says he's my late father. He's late to my baseball games. He was late to my graduation. The cat's in the cradle and the silver spoon. So anyways, apparently we're going to follow in dad's footsteps. There we go. I want to look like, there we go. I want to look like an old dictator from the 1920s. There we go. I want to look like I rule a country with an iron fist. What kind of outfit can I have here? There we go. That's the one right there. So anyways, 
After spending his life chasing waterfalls and not listening to TLC, Dad wants me to continue in his footsteps. But forget you, Dad. I'm becoming an underwater welder. I'm gonna get that money. And we gotta choose our signet, Rob. We gotta choose our name, too. Um, Alabaster. We gotta, we gotta have, like, a name that sounds like an old school, like, fancy name. My name is Alabaster Crane. There we go. That sounds right. That sounds just about right for some kind of, like, eldritch character. And then... We'll go with... Oh, I don't know. I don't know the difference between those two. Like, one's like a dog and one's like a... I don't know. We'll just make it a sword, all right? It'll be fine. So, Alabaster Crane. We are here. We don't have any assets. Feels bad. There are apparently missions in this campaign. So, we have a dusty manuscript. Let's go for it. Hello, my child. Oh, we already did that. We already did the dusty manuscript. That's not... That's not important. All right, so we got some missions in front of us we got to do. Hundreds of years ago, when the Royal Library of Alexandria was burned by unknown perpetrators, most of its collections were gone. This tragedy was so mysterious that various myths arose about it. The father's notes contain information about one of those myths. All he managed to establish before he passed away was the link between a certain manuscript, which was saved from the fire, and its new location in Upper Egypt. The myth says that the manuscript contains the description of the Tower of Babel, but unfortunately, the Royal Archaeology Institute has already sent somebody else. To successfully enter the excavation site, you'll have to get the proper license. Okay. Let me introduce myself. I am Francisco Ruiz Velázquez, one of the most splendid archaeologists of this country, and I am proudly pleased that our Royal Archaeology Institute has such honored archaeologists on board. I have heard you want to start excavations on my territory, so I must warn you, gringo. I know you want to find here something very important and highly valuable. Of course, we do not exactly know what it is, but we received information that it could be a magnifico manuscript from the Royal Library of Alexandria. I am the one who was delegated to the task, and I will find it first. This means you have to get a license first, to be even possible to dare me a challenge. It would not be an easy case. So as a gentleman and Hidalgo, I am obligated to wish you luck. I am also sure you will handle with this problem in the best possible way. But you should hurry up. My team will endeavor to find every Egyptian artifact as soon as possible. Especially this manuscript. If it only exists, of course. And remember, I am watching your every step. Always. I wish you good fortune. Your very humble servant. All right. Well, we already did that, so that's good to go. Uh, there's a couple things we got to do. So we got our mission log over here. We got to get 20 reputation points before we can move on to the next task. So let's get on that. Uh, we got expeditions available right now to secure perimeters into the jungle. Archaeology expedition. Inside of our quarters, it appears as though we have five people working for us. We have Oral Stein, who is apparently an archaeologist and geologist. Okay. Uh, we also have Elazar Suknik, who apparently is a survivalist and explorer. We have Boniface Zegers, who is kind of an all-arounder, but a historian, I guess. We've got Zelia Nuttall, who looks like she's not particularly good at anything. She's a geologist, if nothing else. And then we have Alfred Halliwell who has apparently also been a geologist and historian. So I think we're missing a linguist, is what it looks like to me. Like, we have some people that can kind of fill in as linguists, but I think having linguists would be a really, really good idea. Let's go to the labor market and see who's around. We have Radmila Kadlik. She's a linguist. There you go. So she's going to be pricey, though. Uh, we've also got Guillermo Algaze, who is an explorer. I kind of want to hire Radmila... Just because her attitude is insane and risky. Hmm. I don't know if I want an insane person in my party. That seems a little worrisome. We have nothing in either of those categories. We have the merchant company over here. Uh, we can buy some coffee. Uh, what coffee does is I think it negates. I think coffee and liquor like negate negative effects if bad things happen on the trip. 
And then we have geo radars, tracking boots, things like that that give us bonuses for the entire trip to various stats. So that's plus five to archaeology, plus seven to geology, and that is plus three to survival, just in case you wanted to have those. We got 5,000 pound right now. Okay. In the black market. What do we have going on in the black market? Nothing. Okay. They have a demand for a mummy. And then apparently they also are selling some kind of weird statuette thing, some kind of creepy artifact that's probably going to spawn eldritch monsters inside of my house. Uh, we've also got press over here where we can share our story and we can talk about the things that we've done. But then again, we haven't done anything reputable or interesting yet, so that's not really an option either. So instead, I would recommend that maybe we just go on an expedition. Uh, we have secure the perimeter into the jungle, which apparently is for survival, combat capability, and archaeology. Let's go with archaeology, since I think that's what we have the most of. So we'll begin. We're going to put all these guys into our party. There we are. And off we go. We're setting sail for parts unknown to see if we can explore and find anything good. Uh, we need archaeology right here. Oh, they put a time limit on it. Interesting. So we have an archaeologist, 32, 22. Yeah, let's burn our good archaeologist, I guess. He failed miserably. Feels bad. Uh, everything in this game is entirely random. That was one of my big problems with it when it first came out. Is that like, yeah, you can pick the guy that has the best stats, but all of it comes down to a dice roll. And so, like, if you end up failing, it's often not really your fault. Like, it's just, it's a dice roll that's hidden from the player. And, like, my hope was that when the game came out in 1.0, they would kind of minimize those aspects. Or maybe not minimize, but lower those aspects so it was more consistent. And it would feel a bit more successful a little more frequently when you pick the right person for the job. Um, I will have to actually appraise today whether or not that is the case. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Like, do what you're going to do. Ruthless success. We found an Egyptian mummy. Oh, nice. It's got a black market value of like 500 pounds. Sweet. We just stole, we just stole somebody's ancestor. We just grabbed somebody's grandma up out the ground. Like we didn't even care. Uh, I don't really have too many archaeologists left. Oh my god, we found another mummy. Dude, we are mummied up right now. We are like mummied for days. Doesn't really matter what the last challenge is because it's going to be that guy that does it, so... Unforgettable failure. Alfred Hallowell learnt plus one archaeology. Okay, well, at least he got a bonus to it. I mean, at least he got something for failing. That's nice. The expedition was a success. Oh, was it really? Okay, so apparently we picked up some new fears, though. So apparently some of our guys, every time they fail at a task, they, they get a phobia that kind of reduces their stats and specializes them more. So two people have mycophobia, so apparently they're afraid of mushrooms. And then acrophobia, which is a fear of heights for Alfred Hallowell. Alright. I mean, at least we were successful. Could be worse, I suppose. Back to town we go. We made 5000 bucks, so what's to complain about? Uh, we got a pay salary, so there we go. Salary's been paid. Francisco Ruiz Velasquez bought Steam Lakes for 761 pounds. Okay. Mummy, I love you. The Egyptian trip wasn't a good idea after all. Elazar saw a breathtakingly beautiful depiction of a woman who was a member of the royal family, a princess. However, she's now a mummy and is in love with her. It seems to be kind of a creepy situation. So, do you want to leave him or try to find a cure? Eh, leave him be. Apparently he has phasmophobia now. For your last expedition, you have gained 4,800 pounds and two points of reputation. Very nice. Okay. Sounds good. I like money. Uh, let's go to property management and see if maybe we can buy something. So, the land auction schedule. Uh, we have bare rock over here. Fertility is pretty good. It has no population density, but it's pretty urbanized. So, basically, it's a giant slum is what you're telling me. But we should bulldoze it and build a farm on it. That's what you're saying. We have Morpheus Dale over here, which appears to be a pretty nice area. So that went for like 800 bucks. Where's Morpheus Dale? I want Morpheus Dale. Head on our temple, Fisher Coast, Fog Marshes. So apparently they're selling Fire Peak right now. Yeah, I could throw a thousand at it. Why not? Give it a go. I want to be a wealthy landowner. 
I want to be the kind of person that sits back and drinks a glass of brandy and goes, hmm, yes. Like, that's what I want, you know? Uh, on the black market, they're not really selling anything right now. Apparently, it's low risk. And we can sell it 60% of the time. Is there anything else that I use that for? Kind of concerned, like, can I use those for anything else? Maybe not. Inside of our quarters. Let's have a look at everybody. So he's got mycophobia, which means that he now sucks at geology. Okay. He's got phasmophobia, which means he's bad at archaeology and bad at exploration, which was his main stat. His attitude is neutral. Okay. Change to more secure, change to more efficient. So he's now cautious, apparently. All right. What do the attitudes do over here? So this is a modifier on their efficiency. It can be a random change or a constant value. It impacts on every skill of the adventure. And this modifier to an explorer's chance of getting a fear. This chance is presented in percentage. It not only modifies the chance, it only modifies the chance. It is not the only factor in getting a fear. Okay. So, like, if we go to the merchant company, this coffee is super overpriced. Let's buy some gin. Why not? Yep, we'll get some gin, and we'll get some tobacco. Perfect. And then maybe we'll get, like, a shovel, and possibly, like, some booties. There you go. Apparently, stimulant prices are way up right now. It's a good time to be in the stimulant market. So we have two artifacts. We can send these to the black market if we really want to, but I don't know if it matters. In the labor market, we have a couple of people that want jobs. We have an explorer historian over here. Uh, an explorer historian, as it were. And then we have Ursula von Lahr, who is, I guess, a fighter, actually. She wants to fight on the streets, but she's afraid of pain. Can I replace? So, on my expeditions... This guy, one of these guys has picked up a lot of fears, like multi-fear. Well, actually, it doesn't look too bad. I mean, our geology skills have definitely taken a hit. But I don't know if there's anything worth getting rid of someone for. Yeah. So everybody has their own personal stimulant that they like to use in order to offset the fears that they gain during a trip. Yeah, get some more tobacco just in case, just so we can kind of guard against that. All right, so let's go back to the lobby. Oh, yeah, our press. We can share our story. Everybody loves your story. The popularity is rising. Good. So apparently my popularity is now one instead of zero, and we have no action available right there. Uh, before, what you could do is you could go to, like, here... And then you could actually, like, sell things inside each of these journals, like your stories. So, for example, each of, these, each of these publications has, like, a different personality, if I remember correctly. And so they want certain kinds of stories. Like, some of them are kind of, like, cynical. Some of them are, they want stories of darkness. Some of them want stories about art and things of that nature. It really just kind of depends what you want to go with. Uh, we already shared our story, though, so I don't think we have any action available right now. Apparently, we could talk to these guys. Huh. They've added a bunch of new content since the last time I played. That wasn't a thing the last time I played. Like, you go to the chess club and talk to people. All right. All right. Well, we don't have anything to sell to any of the publications right now, so I don't see a point in wasting our time with it. How's our ranking doing right now? Not that great. Not, not fantastic, but, like, we'll figure it out. Apparently, there's mineral exploration and things like that, too. Interesting. So, there's, like, all kinds of stuff. They've added a bunch of new menus and things to the game. In search of wisdom, we need historians for this one. We need archaeologists and historians for that one. Required explorers, six. So, we need to have, like, more explorers. All right. I think it's probably going to be lost civilization that we're going to go after, but we need to hire a new guy. Um, I feel like his stat spread is a little bit better for what we're looking for, so I'm going to hire him. So he's now inside of our quarters, good to go. We don't really need a fighter. Uh, we needed somebody that's good at archaeology and history, and he kind of fits the bill. So we'll throw everybody in right here. There we go. So everybody has been thrown in as far as our items are concerned. 
We can select, yeah, let's go with tobacco. And we will go with, that was plus to archaeology, right? Okay. So that looks good. Uh, I think we could probably go with that right there. Hopefully we don't fail miserably this time around. I felt like we failed last mission, but we ended up pulling it out in the end. So you know what? Hey, as long as you pull it out in the end, uh, we need history for this one. Who are my historians? I want Sylvanus. We'll take him off. And we'll go with Alfred Howell to begin. We failed, unfortunately. Feels bad. I do wish they gave you some more descriptive text about what happens when you fail or succeed. Like, I would like to see that, but we need exploration right here. buddy oh, I got you covered. Yeah, we were successfully exploring. But yeah, I would like to see... Oh, there is. You have to mouse over. So why doesn't... So... Why doesn't this pop up? Why would you make it so you have to mouse over these little pluses instead of it just popping up while you're on the success or failure screen? How interesting. I don't know how I feel about that. Hey, we found an Egyptian mummy. Nice. So, like, this one says Sylvanas Morley threw a coin into a fountain and wished for a raise, but it was immediately fished out by a homeless person. The team's morale is low, and everybody knows that it's Sylvanas Morley's fault. Being a realist isn't always the best for the team's spirit. Your team found an ancient foundation. However, they were hired to remove artifacts from the construction site. Yeah, I don't even have time to read them all, really. I, I really feel like those should pop up and be on the screen. When it says failure, that should be a flip down that comes down from the thing that says failure and, like, tells you what happened. Either way, it was a successful exp expedition. We got $3,400, some more reputation, and it looks like Alfred Hallowell has gotten sociophobia. He doesn't like social interaction. Welcome to the club, pal. You ain't the only one. You're going to have to learn to get over that one. Your last expedition got us paid. Okay. And then we owe salary right now, so we'll go ahead and throw that out. Sorry, but your attempt to buy the land ended in failure. Francisco bought it out from underneath us. What a dick. On the plus side, that means we got $1,000 back. Let's go to the press. So we can go with the... Yeah, give them an exclusive license to our story. Consider your expedition boring. You've lost your chance. Aw, lame, dude. How could you do me like that? I thought we were... Aw, oh, lame. My story wasn't good, but he threw a coin into a well and then a homeless person took it. I thought it was a good story. This is just me personally. I thought it was an awesome story. Uh, this man has, like, all the fears in the world. I think I'm going to fire him, and we're going to take somebody else. So he's going to get severance. In the labor market, what did he do for us? It looks like he was our linguist. Oh, really? We can get them to learn. Interesting. Well, maybe I should do that. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, you get better at... History. Sounds good. Yesterday is history. Tomorrow's a mystery. But today is a gift, and that's why they call it the present. Wah, wah, wah. Uh, we've got linguistics over here. We've got exploration. He's already pretty good at exploration. Let's make him even better at exploration. He likes trains and doesn't believe in vaccines. Okay. Uh, what else you got going on? You can learn geology. That would even out his lossage, which is a minus five. Or he can train something else. Um, let's go combat capabilities so that we have somebody that can fight. We can also give her combat capability. That's a big bonus right there. We've got linguistics and we've got geology. Let's bring you up to balance out my other geologist that lost all his points. Uh, I don't want to fiddle with your attitude. I actually just wanted you to... Oh, you're getting fired anyways. You don't matter. And then for you, we can have you learn. Um, let's go with a little bit of history. Let's have somebody that's a little bit better at history, just in case we get, like, a double history challenge. Hallowell's getting fired at the end of the day, which means that we probably should go to the labor market and hire somebody. Uh, this guy's pretty good, actually. He's got solid stats, like, all around. He doesn't really have anything that he's terrible at, except for archaeology. We already have plenty of archaeologists in our party who are good at their job. Okay. What about you, Clarence Moore? He's also decent. But I think the other guy is the clear winner, just in pure stat points. Also, he doesn't have a risky attitude. We'll go ahead and hire Florentine Rue, who looks kind of like Walt Disney, I guess. Uh, it's a trap. Archaeology and combat. Okay. We have geology. 
just geology. And it requires seven explorers. Good God. And then five explorers for a history expedition. Well, we'll go to the merchant company. Is there anything that I can buy to increase my geology? So we've got combat, we've got exploration. No, we don't. Damn. I was hoping we would have like a, a geo sonar or something. Or like a... I don't know. A gravimeter or something that we could use in order to do things. Or like a stereo net or something. Alright, well, that leaves us here. Our music's still rocking, so that's good. Our mission log has gone pretty well, actually. It hasn't gone poorly. Uh, we've succeeded at pretty much everything we've thrown our hat in on. I honestly think that... Let me, let me, let me take a look at people here and see how we're doing on geology. 26, 26, 22, 30, 24, 21, 33... 24, 25, 20. You know, I don't think the geology mission is a good idea. Um, I just don't think we have good enough geology. I, I think we should probably go with history. It it'll make this thing safer. And so, with you, we have an archaeologist. Anybody else decent at archaeology? Actually, we don't really have that many archaeologists either. Sort of a disappointing fact about this group. We may actually be better off with the history mission. Oh, it's geology. Ugh. Rough spread. Real rough spread. Do I have anybody that's decent at combat? So we've got 18, 25, 31... 26. Nobody is particularly good at combat. Okay, purchase the tobacco. The revolver gives us plus three to combat. We can get plus seven to archaeology. Was any of these archaeology? That one's archaeology, so... Might as well get the archaeology bonus, I guess. Yeah, let's, let's do it. I, I don't think we're going to win, but we can try. Now, we only get to bring five people along, so we need an archaeologist... Uh, he's got combat capabilities, so we'll bring him. Didn't we give one of these guys combat capability? We did. We gave you combat capability. Uh, and then we don't really have anybody else that's... exceptional at archaeology. They're all kind of average at it. Alright, I'll take you. Sounds good. We're probably going to lose this one, but we'll give it a go. Uh, we can select our items uh, with our people... Go back. Hold on. I wanted to see... Oh, it wants me to reassign them now? Lame. Okay. I think most of our guys use tobacco. I think. Yeah. I'm pretty sure, like, most of our dudes use tobacco. So there's combat capability, combat capability, uh, archaeology, and then who's the best archaeologist out of you three? Eh, we'll give him a shot. Why not? All right, next. So we'll throw tobacco in there, and then we also wanted the sifting screens, which will give us a plus seven. So that evens out one of our weaknesses on this go. Hopefully we pull it out the other end. We are Archeo Shinaring. Boniface Zeggers forged a fake papyrus with a recipe for a medicine. He sold it with a profit, but after a day, the buyer threatened to break his legs if he doesn't give the money back. That tends to happen when you're out there rooking people, all right? If you're trying to hoodwink, these things happen. Who's my best combatant? You? All right, fight away. An unforgettable failure. So Boniface learned plus one combat capability. So at least he got a free stat increase. We may not have been successful, but at the same time, he learned something from the failure. So I guess I'll take that over nothing else. Uh, we have an archaeology check right now. We will have him do it. Oh, we need two people. All right, you two. Failure. Feels bad, man. Feels very, very bad. That was a lot of points we put out there, like 50-something points, and we still failed it. Uh, our last two archaeologists, I guess. Another failure. We even brought bonuses. So we had a plus 14 to both of those tests and still failed it. Feels bad. And we still get paid, so that's good. And then Boniface has epistemophobia. I don't know what that is. That's Epistle means letter, so he's afraid of writing? 
Okay. Well, there you go. I mean, we got the money. We got 1800 bucks, so that's better than nothing. Uh, we will pay salary for right now. He bought Bear Rock. This man's buying up all the property. There's something more about your last expedition. Zelia Nuttall found a horrific, or horrific specimen, an abomination of a human skeleton. If it saw the light of day, it would be a scandal. Luckily, Zelia Nuttall is a smart cookie, and there are only photos of that horror. The specimen has been shattered and buried in some forgotten part of the world, but what about the photos? Burning them would be the safe way. However, they may still be useful. It's the one and only evidence of your thrilling discovery. Yeah, keep them in a safe. Nothing changes, at least for now. This is Arkeo Shinar, and my name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so that you don't have to. If you enjoyed this video, hit it with a like. I think the game's fun. I think it relies a little bit too much on invisible randomness. That would be my big complaint about it right now is that, like, the game relies on hidden dice rolls too much, so it's just, like, you fail, and, like, you don't know any reason why. I think the game should give you some kind of prompting to let you know why you failed. If you failed due to, like, it should give you a little pop-up that goes in that's, like, you failed due to random chance. It's apparent now why the little plus signs don't pop up when you fail or succeed. It's because they're unlinked. They don't matter. Uh, it's just, like, little storyline tidbits, I guess. So I guess that complaint for earlier can be swept off the board. But I would like some kind of flavor text for your failures and your successes. On top of that, when you fail or if you succeed, I think the dice roll should be visible to the players so that they know what stats they need to increase in order to be successful in the future. Uh, as of right now, it kind of feels like you're throwing darts at the board when it comes to your upgrades, just like hoping that the numbers are enough to get you there. But I think there's too much information that's hidden from the player. Um, they should be privy to the dice roll so that they can be like, okay, so I failed that because I didn't have enough archaeology, so I'll increase my archaeology next time. Or I failed that because I didn't have enough combat. Or I failed that just based on the fact that, like, the randomness of the dice screwed me over. It had nothing to do with my stats. On paper, I should have succeeded, but it was an 85% chance to succeed. And, you know, the 15% came up. Uh, those are my observations as of right now, but I do think the game is pretty cool and it's an interesting idea. So hopefully it continues to get development. It's out now in 1.0 from Early Access on Steam so you can get it. I will see you all later. Thank you for stopping on in. Don't forget to leave a like on the video. I do, and take care, everybody.